Hey guys, before I start today's video, uh, I just want to quickly apologize for the wait. I originally started working on this video as soon as the medals got announced in JP, but then in the middle, like halfway when making the video, I find out that the banners for Global are completely different, so I had to wait until it gets released. On top of the fact that I've also had to retake the video a couple times now just because of the fact that I've been having some mic issues. But before I start today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my second YouTube channel that I've just recently put up. Many of you guys probably know by now, but this channel, the Union Cross Nation channel, is more or less meant for just specifically Kingdom Hearts content. And so I made a separate second channel. It's Brian IRL for pretty much anything else that I feel like playing or talking about or just doing. It's supposed to be just, you know, whatever I have fun with and want to talk about sort of thing. So it would really help me out if you could go ahead and just, you know, subscribe, watch my videos on there. The faster that I can get that to a thousand subscribers and whatever amount of, I think 5,000 hours of watch time or something like that, uh, I can get the, the channel monetized as well. Not only would it help me get more ad revenue, but then I can actually go in turn and use that to help get better equipment, which would help me be able to make better and more videos for you guys essentially. My Christmas video, for example, is just a small taste of the type of stuff I would like to do for you guys on a regular basis. But just due to my financial situation, I'm just unable to do that. So by all means, please check it out. I'd really appreciate it. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation, and for today's video, we're going to be going over the new Wayfinder Trio medals that we just got in the global version of the game. Now, like I mentioned before, I had already started working on this video multiple times already, uh, starting yesterday, but I ran into problems, so... Hopefully this is my final take. But jumping straight into it, let's go over the medals real quick. So starting off, we have Supernova HD Aqua, which is a magic upright metal tier 9, costs 4 gauges, is AoE, does 3 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of 41.95 to a 59.13. For 2 turns, it provides plus 8 tiers of upright strength buffs, plus 15 magic strength buffs, minus 15 magic defense debuffs and minus 15 upright defense debuffs as well as provides for two turns 140 percent guilt buff plus one counters to enemy counters does more damage with one enemy or zero raid parts left and costs two additional gauges now for anybody who is kind of confused as to what that part means that two additional gauges part means essentially how metals work is that you know how right here on the metal it says that it costs four gauges? What that means is that in order to activate the metal, you must have at least four gauges. Uh, this is why even if you have like a cost reduction skill on a metal, for example, if you don't have that basic minimum uh, gauge requirement at least, so in this case, four gauges for aqua, you will not be able to activate the metal even though you have a cost reduction skill on the metal itself. So what that means in terms of the Wayfinder Medals is that essentially the activation cost of the metal is going to cost 4 gauges, but regardless of how much it actually costs, including cost reduction skills, it will cost an additional 2 gauges. So even if you have a cost reduction skill on the metal that makes it cost only 1 gauge, it's still going to cost an additional 2 gauges because of the ability. So it's gonna ultimately still cost three gauges. I put a three there for some reason when, it's, when it was supposed to be a two, but it will cost three gauges in that type of situation. But other than that, it does have an AOE supernova ability, which includes uh, being able to do more damage with one enemy or zero raid parts left as well. Just for reference as well, I, I know I have it say, but trigger is before slot one in PvP. That's wrong. It's before slot six. Just, just ignore that part. But that's HD Aqua. Uh, Supernova HD Terra and Ventus are the exact same thing as Aqua, just the power and speed versions of her. Um, and the fourth medal that we have for the Wayfinder Trio is the Supernova Terra and Ventus and Aqua medal, which is pretty much just a combination of, of all three medals for the most part. It's a speed upright medal, tier 9, costs 4 gauges, is single target compared to the AoE that the other three are. Uh, so this one's single target, does 7 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of a 46.66 to a 65.44 for 2 turns. It raises the upright strength buff to plus 8. It has plus 15 PSM strength buffs, minus 15 PSM defense debuffs, and minus 15 upright defense 
as the boss. As well as provides 150% guilt buff, adds 5 counters to enemy counters, does more damage with 1 enemy or 0 ray parts left, and costs 2 additional gauges just like the other metals. As well as also being an AoE supernova ability and doing more damage with 1 enemy or 0 ray parts left. Now in a nutshell, just to try and make this as quick as possible because I've already recorded this multiple times and I don't want to have to repeat myself if I can help it. In a nutshell, these metals, their abilities are honestly not that very good. The only things that are actually good about all of these metals abilities are going to be the, uh, the enemy counters that they provide as well as their multipliers. Okay, these are pretty much the only actual legitimate things about these metals are actually good about them everything else is kind of irrelevant or trash um, you can make a possible argument that the upright debuffs the max upright debuffs that they provide is also pretty good but that would just be completely dependent on what type of metals you already have and more likely than not you're going to have metals anyways that wouldn't need them in the first place but just to quickly explain what I mean, the main reason why I say these metals abilities are honestly not that great, in a way they kind of suck. Um, even though they look like it's a lot, realistically it's actually not. And that is just because of a few reasons. So first of all, let's just go in order. We have the 140% guilt buff, or in the Terra Inventors and Aquas' case, uh, it's 150% guilt buff. Obviously we know that the highest guilt buff in the game right now, aside from supernova abilities, is 150%, which of course the Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie Metal already provides, as well as the Supernova Elsa Metal also provides it as well. So they don't provide provide any increase in guilt buffs at all whatsoever. Like I said before, the counters, adding counters, that's always a nice touch, especially being uh, the strongest damage metals in the game now. Being able to provide counters is always a good thing and is going to be one of their only redeeming features about, this, about these metals. The fact that it costs two additional gauges regardless of what you do is all obviously going to be a con. And in terms of their multiplier, their multiplier, they are literally the strongest damage metals in the entire game for both AOE purposes and single target purposes. And that alone is going to automatically make them you know, meta, which makes sense of course, okay? So they are the strongest damage metals in the game, period. To which I would say that I wouldn't take it too hard too much because of the fact that these are the first tier 9 medals that are going to be in the game as of right now. Chances are as more tier 9 medals come out, they're going to be replaced in terms of multipliers fairly quickly. Uh, so I don't really, I wouldn't like, you know, look at that for too long as being like, oh, hey, yeah, let me get this because they're the strongest. It's more of the fact of like, oh, hey, these are the first of their kind before, you know, the next month or two pops out where they're going to just dish out tons of them too. Uh, with similar multipliers. So I want to be too concerned about the multipliers. Now, the major thing about these metals, uh, in terms of their buffs and debuffs at the very least, as you can see here, they pretty much provide the same amount of buffs and debuffs for every single one of the metals, no matter what attributes they are. It's always about the same thing. It's plus 8 uh, upright strength buffs, and then it's 15 of everything else. The main problem with these metals though is primarily because of the fact that they do not provide any general strength buffs at all whatsoever as well as no general defense debuffs at all whatsoever. And in case you're not aware, the biggest and most crucial aspect of any legitimate setup in the game, uh, when you're making a setup, the buffs and debuffs that you have to make sure you have first before anything else is that you got to make sure that you have at least all of your general strength buffs first and all your general defense debuffs first as well okay these two things are your most important buffs and debuffs first before you start touching anything like psm or upright and reverse and that's primarily because of the fact that they have the biggest impact compared to any other buffs or debuffs. So the situation that ends up occurring is that because of the fact that these metals do not provide any general strength buffs at all whatsoever, nor do they provide any general defense debuffs at all whatsoever either, what ends up happening is, is that, just like I'm showing right here on this setup, if you end up having a setup that uses these metals, you're going to need to have metals of some sort that provide those general strength buffs and those general defense debuffs. But the ironic part about this though is that any significant metal that you're going to use to get you the majority of those buffs or debuffs anyways in the first place is already going to be providing most of those PSM or upright reverse buffs and debuffs anyways. To which case the buffs and debuffs that the 
Wayfinder Trio medals provide are kind of irrelevant and just redundant. A good example, of course, is Kingdom Hearts 3 Kai, which pretty much provides all of the buffs you might need. Sure, it only provides seven tiers of upright buffs and debuffs, but that's not a big deal because the fact that A, you can either use a copy medal on it to get the rest of the buffs or debuffs, or B, you can even use some of the, the Kyren Shion uh, EX Plus medals to get the rest of the buffs and debuffs. Or C, heck, you can even use debuffer medals, like the tier 5 prime medals like Riku vs. Roxas, for example, to get, you know, majority of those debuffs. Now, I will state though that at the very least, because of the fact that they provide at least more than half of the upright buffs and debuffs for you, that does mean that you wouldn't have to use a metal like Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie more than once. Even You wouldn't even need to copy it just because of the fact that the Wayfinder Trio will complete the rest of the upright buffs and debuffs for you, um, as well as provide their own respective PSM attributes. Uh, but the logic still stands that even without the Wayfinder Trio medals, you're still going to have that the majority of your PSM or upright buffs and debuffs are going to be provided through your main buffer debuffer medals anyways in the first place before you even reach the Wayfinder Trio. Even if you end up being a beginner player, for instance, because of the type of medals in the game, you're going to need to focus on getting your general strength buffs up first and your general defense down debuffs instead first before anything else that by the time you've completely maxed them out as shown like right here for example this is kind of a beginner ish setup before i even reach slot 5 which is where my supernova hd terra is um, by the time i get to slot 4 which is where i finally get to max out my uh general strength buffs and general defense debuffs um so i would just go slot by slot slot one i use Prime Kristoff over here gives me like half of my buffs. Uh, then I go to Kyrie over here, which gives me the rest of my general strength buffs and power buffs, as well as all of the rest of my uh, my upright buffs. Uh, and now I need to start focusing on my debuffs, which is where Mickey comes in. Mickey comes in. I have most of my debuffs already, and then Prime Chernabog finishes off the general defense debuffs, the power defense debuffs, and I only have a handful of upright debuffs left. To which case, that's the only section that the HT Terra actually comes in to help out. In which case, because of the fact that HT Terra is going to guarantee be your strongest metal regardless of what you have, um, unless you happen to have extra attack on tier 8 medals or something you're gonna want to have terra on the pet slot anyways in which case you'll probably have a, another medal maybe heck you could even just have a copy medal for instance and boom by the time you even get to slot 5 you have all your buffs and debuffs anyways and then you would use your terra for quite literally just damage uh, and this is exactly what i'm trying to iterate that because of the fact that the Wayfinder Trio medals provide no general strength buffs at all whatsoever and no general defense debuffs at all whatsoever. You're going to need to fill those in with other medals first. And by the time you do that anyways, uh, the buffs and debuffs that the Wayfinder medals provide are just completely redundant and pointless. Uh, so once again, just to quickly reiterate, it is because of what I just showed you guys that the abilities that the Wayfinder Trio medals provide are for the most part, almost completely pointless. <laughs> uh, um, and the only actual redeeming factors about the medals at all, period, are going to be the enemy counters that they provide, their multipliers, obviously, because they're the strongest multipliers in the game right now, as well as, debatably, their upright buffs and debuffs. Uh, mostly the debuffs, though, because the upright buffs, like, Pretty much every metal provides upright buffs at this point because of the tier 7 uh, feature. Um, but the upright debuffs are going to like partially be possibly relevant. But that's only going to really be if like you're a new player for example. So in terms of whether or not you should actually try pulling from these metals, let's quickly take a look at their banners. So this is their banners right here. They're all falling price deals, which is which is pretty nice. They provide a tier 7, 7 star medal or higher in each of their pulls as well. Um, as well as comes with a trait medal for each of their respective banners. Now although they are falling price deal, the main thing I do want to point out real quick is that none of these are mercy pulls. Thankfully, they did not have a return of the VIP mercy pulls at all whatsoever. 
Um, although, for all we know, that could be a, te a, be a temporary thing. They could very easily just be trying to make it so that uh, because these are the first tier 9 medals of their kind, there's no mer VIP Mercy. Uh, but then, you know, they'll do a reprint and they'll have VIP Mercy or something like that. It's very possible they could still do that, still choose to do that. So, just because they're not here now does not mean that it's completely out the window, so don't celebrate just yet. Wait for a few more banners to come out before, you know, reaching to that conclusion. But at least for now, VIP Mercy is not here anymore. But at the very least, I can say right now that because of the fact that all, every single one of these banners are non-Mercy banners, um, the decision is should be fairly obvious and is honestly quite easy to make too as well, which is just don't pull, okay? <laughs> As it's always been my policy on this channel, if there's ever a non-Mercy banner uh, that pops up in the game, just don't pull on it. It's just not worth the time, effort, or emotional uh, investment in it at all whatsoever, especially financially too. It's just not worth it. I don't care how good the metal is, it's just, it's never worth it. D never worth it. And chances are, kind of like I mentioned before a little bit, that because these are the first tier 9 medals of uh, in the game um, realistically these medals are more like tier 8 medals like their abilities are more like tier 8 medals and they're not really worth t being called tier 9 they're only tier 9 because of their multiplier and that is literally it I promise you that after a few more medals come out which is what always happens whenever a new tier comes out in the game after a few more medals comes out then there's gonna be that one medal that will start to actually define the tier uh, in itself like it'll have that new mechanic or, or ability that will uh, start being replicated throughout the rest of the tier that like truly defines is like oh yeah this is the type of metal that I want this is a game changing metal type of thing there's always a metal like that that comes out after the first few metals of that tier come out um, and it's that kind of metal that I would say you should wait for and, and try to and try to save up for Heck, for all I know, they might finally make a reprint of the tier 5 copy medals and make tier 9 copy medals. That would be really nice, to be honest. Like, we're at a point in the game right now where tier 5 copy medals are honestly not doing so hot anymore. We have the 150% guilt at tier 5 compared to a tier 9 280% guilt. That's a huge difference at this point in the game. So realistically, uh, especially because of the fact that the tier 5 copy medals are also in the beginner's deal as well, I honestly would not be too surprised if they start making tier 9 upright backwards copy medals uh, fairly soon. But other than that, just a quick recap, the medals aren't really as good as you might think they are. Uh, the only good things about them are their multiplier and the fact that they provide counters and kind of that they provide upright debuffs. Uh, but aside from that, they're not very good. It's not worth pulling for them in the first place because they're non-mercy pulls. Other than that, I would love to hear what you guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It is the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.